This founder has built a portfolio of SaaS products that do $28,000 a month in recurring revenue. You'll be learning about the founder Soren and his amazing journey. Before I dive into it, I want to say that if you're looking to build your very own micro SaaS, I have a complete step-by-step -step academy that shows you how to build, scale, and profit from your very own micro SaaS product. Even if you don't have any product ideas, funding, or SaaS experience, the Academy has you covered, so make sure you check out the link in the description below. Or if you're just looking for some free ideas, I also have a link in the description below as well. Soren SaaS products all run through the overall company Swift EQ. So what Swift EQ does is build Zendesk apps to help support teams do more with less. And it's a suite of automation, help center, and agent assist Zendesk apps. And so overall, it helps customers support teams with automation and streamlining their workflows. This allows them to focus on providing a stellar customer experience. And so when started Swift EQ on the side while working full time. He also set aside a year's salary before quitting when he did end up going full time on the product. And this was extremely important for him as he didn't want to and couldn't afford to put his family's financial security at risk because of his entrepreneurial ambitions. And he did it this way as well because of a previous experience he had in 2016. He had built a product called CS Moments and they had an initial working prototype and a potential order and in all their excitements, they decided to dive in completely. And when they dove in, at the time, he couldn't afford to go without a salary, which meant they had to seek investment early on. And this led to a chain of negative consequences, including early dilution of ownership and a false sense of security. And with Swift EQ, things were much better. And less than six months after moving full time on the product, he was completely profitable, funding everything from customer revenue. So currently the monthly recurring revenue is around $28,000 and it has more than doubled in the last 12 months. So they've grown quite significantly over the last year. And so in terms of a profit breakdown, roughly half of this goes towards expenses, including salaries, tools, and partners, while the rest he's setting aside to reinvest in future growth. The business model relies primarily on recurring revenue from subscriptions for these Zendesk apps. And the majority of customers subscribe to annual or monthly plans. And along with that, they do offer a smaller one-time payment options for customers who need a short-term solution, such as duplicating a help center. The reason why they have these one-time payment plans is they notice that after some customers are installing and getting set up, they only need a specific set of features for a few weeks. And this led to really high churn. And introducing a 30-day pass for those users worked well to reduce churn and keep them satisfied. And many of these short-term users even returned later to purchase a full year subscription. In terms of how Soren went and priced the product, he started out a little higher. As with his experience, you gotta be really careful with pricing as many founders start out underpricing, which can lead to low growth, attracting the wrong customers, and even impacting how people perceive the value of your product. As if you start a little higher, you can always adjust if needed, but it's harder to raise prices later. And starting from his first release, he charged for the product right away, as it's essential for both motivation and validation, as if you're just giving a free product away, you're never really going to know if people are willing to pay for it and if you have an actual sustainable product. And adjusting prices upwards made a noticeable difference in the revenue and the type of customers he was attracting. And so although there are quite a few apps available now, with his first Zendesk app, he kept the scope very small and focused only on the essential parts. And this allowed him to finish the app in less than two weeks. And because he launched early, he was able to get feedback and make improvements, all while working full-time at his other job. And the whole project was bootstrapped and was very lean. And one of the best decisions he made during this period was to prioritize customer feedback when deciding which features to build. He focused on features that addressed common pain points, making the product better for a large number of users, not just one. And this came from his experience with CX Moments as they never found product market fit there. In terms of the tech stack used for Zendesk apps that are being built, it's pretty straightforward and effective. On the front end, he uses React, well, Node.js, and MongoDB power the backend. And for certain tasks like data processing and automation, he relies on Python. And the combination has been reliable for his needs and he hasn't had to make any major changes over the time and the stack has proven both stable and scalable 
as he's expanded. This tends to be a lesson shown by most founders. It's so much easier to build on an existing tech stack that has lots of supports, extensions, and has been around for a while. As a customer who doesn't really care what you've built your product on, whether it's the newest and latest or something that's old and stable. They just want a product that works and helps solve their pain points. So in terms of marketing for all these automation products and customer support products, it was a learning journey overall. And there are several ways in which these tools are marketed. The first one is marketplaces. So since he's focused on building Zendesk apps, the most natural first step was to list it on the Zendesk apps marketplace. And so this is like an app store for Zendesk users and many Zendesk customers search here when they're facing a challenge. So this channel gave an initial customer base to go off. However, he quickly realized that while it's great for validation and getting initial users, the marketplace alone isn't enough to drive sustainable growth. With thousands of apps listed, there's very little control control over visibility. So he had to look for additional channels to get distribution. The next strategy he tried was free tools. And this is the engineering as marketing approach. We were creating small but useful apps that solve common pain points for other Zendesk users. And these free apps collect user emails during signup, allowing Soren to promote other paid apps through banners in the UI or in the emails they sent. And this approach worked well as well, especially because customers are actively looking for free tools that can help with exporting and searching through Zendesk. However, it's easy to overdo this by creating too many apps or making the app free but not particularly valuable. Overall, these free apps need to be straightforward, easy to support, and most importantly, they need to offer a feature that you know customers are already seeking. Another effective channel for Swift EQ has been content marketing with a twist. Instead of relying on generic content, they partnered with a team of subject matter experts who produce high quality content articles specifically tailored to their audience's needs. As initially, they tried a general marketing content strategy with an agency, but their work felt shallow with content full of platitudes rather than practical advice. So now he publishes weekly blog posts written by experts and customer support, which are helpful and relevant. Each post also goes out in a newsletter to users who are signed up for free apps, keeping them in touch with the community and providing value to them. That really makes sense in the age of AI as well. It's so easy to create that generic content that really has no depth and provides very little value. So by going really deep into a subject matter that allows them to get higher quality posts, that are more engaging to read for the users and they provide more value. In terms of plans to expand Swift EQ, he's looking at expanding to other platforms such as Intercom, Freshdesk, or Salesforce. And this is all to reduce platform risk. As right now, the business relies heavily on Zendesk, which poses a risk if there are any changes on their end. So branching out will help make the business more resilient. Additionally, the founder wants to step back from development and focus more on marketing and growth. It's been a challenge as he's naturally inclined towards the technical side as he is a developer, but he's working on shifting his mindset and dedicating more time to scaling the business. Overall, the goal is to grow to a 1 million euro annual recurring revenue business, proving it can be more than something that pays his salary. So this concludes the video here. I'll leave a link in the description to the original story source material for this video is an article written by James Fleischman. Also, before I go, I want to say that if you're interested in the Build a Micro SaaS Academy, there's a link in the description below where you can learn how to build, scale, and profit from your very own Micro SaaS. There are also free Micro SaaS ideas in the description below as well. All you have to do is enter in your email. But thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed this video, I would love it so much if you smash that like and subscribe button below. If you have any questions, leave a comment. But thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one.